Hello and welcome to another episode of MageCast's I.O. My name is Fabrizio Branca and in this episode I'd like to give you an overview of the APIs that Magento offers out of the box and then we'll have a closer look at the XML Connect API. First, let's look at the APIs that are there. Um, there's XML RPC and we're not going to talk about this at all. I don't even know who's actually still use, using this. And there's SOAP version 1 and SOAP version 2 that also comes in a um, WSI compliance mode. And then there's the REST API. Then there is the XML Connect API that was um, created um, to support the uh, mobile app that Magento launched a while ago and that kind of already disappeared again. But the XML Connect module is part of the Magento core and is also available separately um, for download on the Magento.com site in a, in a uh, potentially newer version. There's some strange thing going on there. This module has another inner version and um, so check out the website to see if there's a newer version if you're starting to implement a project uh, using this. And then this year at uh, Magento Imagine, Magento announced the new um, mobile SDK for iOS and I was curious to see what API this is using and found that there is a, a new module called Mobile Connect and that interestingly is very in, uh, very close to um, XML Connect. So there are um, the controllers almost the same, the implementation is um, almost exactly the same. So I'm not sure whether there is a separate module for that. I also found some references to the Enterprise Website Restrictions module so I assume the Mobile Connect module will be Enterprise only. So, XML RPC, SOAP version 1 and SOAP version 2 are implemented in the Mage underscore API module that has been around for a while. Then the REST API is implemented in the Mage API 2 module that has been added with Magento 1.7. XML Connect lives in a module called Mage XML Connect and Mobile Connect lives in Mage Mobile Connect. Uh, don't confuse SOAP version 2 and Mage API 2. Um, the SOAP v2 still lives in Mage API and Mage API 2 actually holds the REST API and both of those are not related to Magento 2. We're talking about Magento 1 at this point. So let's look at SOAP version 1 uh, very quick. So this is a PHP client that I actually took from the um, Magento documentation and as you can see there is um, there is a generic call method. So there's also a login method but then after that um, you do everything using this generic call method. So basically um, the whistle file only contains this one call method and does not expose the individual methods. Instead the methods are uh, a parameter. And uh, of course, that is a lot simpler to implement uh, since you don't have to deal with the Vistal file. But also, if you use um, um, libraries that depend on um, grabbing the information from this Vistal file, also there are libraries that will auto generate code for you. That, of course, isn't possible. And this problem was solved in the SOAP version 2 implementation, where actually every single um, method that is exposed to the SOAP API has its own um, representation in this API. Um, of course, that's also a lot more complex uh, to implement because you also have to provide the snippet for the, uh, for the whistle file, um, but it is, it is a lot more powerful and the data is um, better structured in this one. Then there is the REST API, and um, this REST API works very differently. Um, so we have um, these uh, these HTTP requests, and actually the HTTP verb, in this case get, represents the action if you read something or if you update something uh, or if you create something new. And then um, there are resources and also attributes. And in the Magento implementation, um, you also define different roles. Um, um, this resource and the attribute might behave differently uh, depending on if you're an admin user, if you're a guest user, or if you're a customer a logged in front end customer. And uh, with the, um, in the request header with the content type, you can actually control if um, you uh, expect uh, a JSON format or an XML format. So the REST API can do both. And um, yeah, so by default, uh, the REST API works with OAuth, which is um, not really user-friendly if you actually intend to build uh, some customer-facing front end like an alternative um, JavaScript-based um, UI. And Vina did some excellent work here uh, creating a, a simple session auth adapter that allows you to um, actually use the regular session ID 
And um, you should definitely check out his presentation at last year's Meet Magento, where he presents a one-page shop that he built um, with the REST API and AngularJS. Okay, so let's look at the Mage API, and um, you can see um, the Mage API is a regular um, uh, front controller. There is this Mage API controller action, and uh, the SOAP controller, the XML RPC, and the V2 SOAP controller, all three inherit from this one. But in the index action, actually, um, there is a new server model instantiated, the Mage API model server, that then, based on your XML um, configuration, uh, finds out what uh, what um, methods um, you want to expose expose to the SD uh, through the SOAP API or XML RPC, and in case of SOAP, it will also take care of the um, whistle file generation and uh, handles this for you. Uh, Mage API two um, this is uh, uh, what implements REST works very differently. So there is in the HD access file. All requests starting with API slash REST will actually be uh, processed by a new file called API.php. And in that API.php file, again, there is the separate server model, which will be instantiated Mage API 2 model server. But then uh, this one has a run method that actually uses a custom router. So you can tell here, this is a lightweight um, endpoint. It does not go through index.php. It does not use the um, default Magento routing. Um, this is a lot more lightweight approach. And also, this uh, special router allows you to have these URLs that we saw before, um, uh, allowing this new URL pattern. Since the Magento default router would always expect um, a parameter name and a parameter value pair, and this is not really how um, the REST URLs would look like. And the, this new router would actually help you do that. So the Mage um, API 2, uh, in, in most cases, looks like this. There is this Mage API 2 model resource abstract class. And then uh, you would create something like a, um, um, a class representing your resource. And then there are the different views on that. There's the guest view, the admin view, and the customer view. So view not, not in terms of MVC, but like the different um, entry points on how this resource um, should act uh, with the different um, uh, HTTP verbs in the context of a backend user, a frontend user, or um, an anonymous user. So dealing with the SOAP API v1 and v2 and with REST API can be really like difficult. And uh, at this point, I'd, I'd like to point you to Marius's um, ultimate module creator, which uh, basically allows you to uh, create a module and just basically when creating an entity, there's a checkbox and uh, you can make the, this module um, create the classes for you for all three, SOAP1 and SOAP2 and REST, which is really easy and convenient and definitely where you could start to uh, building your um, API. So now let's look at Mage XML Connect. And this is the one that uh, I'd, I'd like to focus in this screencast on. So Mage XML Connect basically, again, is a, um, uh, inherits from the front action controller, and then it comes with an abstract um, Mage XML controller action. But then you can tell there is a lot of stuff going on there, and all of these are um, um, classes inheriting from this controller action. So the difference here is these classes actually are, are, are doing the XML um, API, so there is no separate server here. So XML Connect uses the regular Magento routing and the regular Magento action controllers um, to do uh, what they're doing. And uh, on top of that, they also just use regular layout files and blocks. Um, and the only difference is that in this case, the blocks will not generate HTML like they would usually do, but they will generate XML. And some of the blocks actually inherit in existing from existing um, blocks and just basically create the um, XML flavor of this output. So this makes it really easy to get started with um, XML Connect, since if you know how Magento works, you know how XML Connect works, because it's no different. Uh, you can easily create new controllers, you can extend them, and you can change the um, default behavior. And um, also authentication is uh, basically exactly how the web would work. Um, you um, interact with the API, you get a front-end uh, cookie uh, with a session ID, and then you pass the session ID to keep the session alive. OK, let's have a closer look to um, the XML Connect demo. So first thing we need to do is um, we need to activate that, because the latest version of Magento um, 
have the um, XML Connect API disabled by default. So you go to App, ETC Modules, Mage, XML Connect, and then you go to the active node and you change that to true. Let's clear the cache. So I'm using N98 Mage Run here, but you're totally fine to do that in the back end, of course. Uh, now go into the back end, and if you reload it, you will see a new menu item pop up here called Mobile. So XML Connect expects you to create this mobile record. And um, in this record, um, you can um, configure a lot more things that we're not going to use. So this record is actually intended to configure the Magento mobile app. So you can see there's a lot more things going on there. And um, But we are just creating a dummy record and we don't need to take care of anything else. So go to Mobile, Manage Apps, and then here we create a new app. And um, the device type um, is irrelevant, just pick any and click on Continue. If you have a multi-store setup, uh, you will have to um, choose the store here since every app is basically uh, mapped to a store. So we just call this test and we can ev leave everything as is. We just saved it. And uh, once this is saved, the um, a Magento will create this code for you. Um, and this app code is important because this is basically how the um, XML Connect client uh, interacts with Magento. So now let's look at the, um, at the simple client that I implemented. So um, I created a class just to make it easier to interact with, uh, with the XML Connect API, which is this simple HTTP client. And what this does is basically um, you configure um, a, a base URL and constructor, and then there is a, a simple request method that uses curl to actually do the requests to the XML Connect API. And um, the only thing that's special about this class is, is this concept of the cookie jar. So you can add cookies to, to, um, to the request. And also, um, if the response contains cookies, uh, which it does, for example, the, uh, the front-end cookie with the session IDs, um, these cookies will be added to the cookie jar. And the next request you do with the same class, will, with the same object, will um, add the, um, the, those same cookies to the next request. And so we implicitly establish the session, keep it alive. So let's go and um, check the, um, the um, um, this simple script that I that I did that basically demonstrates a simple checkout uh, process. So um, the simple HTTP XML client points to basically the space URL, which is your uh, Magento uh, domain name, the, the host name, and um, XML Connect being the front name um, used in the Mage XML Connect uh, module. Then uh, we need to add those cookies, and that's important. Um, so um, App code, uh, and this is the app code that was auto generated. And then the module expects a screen size, even though we're not going to use it, um, it's, it needs to be there. So feel free to add whatever you want here. And now um, there is not really a documentation for that. So this is uh, really undocumented, uh, but that doesn't mean that it's not supported. Uh, but it means that you actually have to dig into the code. You have to find out what controllers are there, what methods are there, and you have to look into those methods to find out what parameters these methods are expecting. So there's the catalog category controller within the XML Connect uh, module. And uh, you can see there uh, it expects a category ID and also an offset and count. And then it will return you all the products in an XML format in this category. So uh, another thing the simple HTTP control uh, class does is um, it, we, we know that we always get XML back. So it already passes that into a simple XML object so we can easily access it here. So here we're just grabbing the first product's product ID and then the next request we're adding it to the cart and then um, actually uh, by doing another request here we can we can get the cart content back to verify that this product we just added is actually now uh, part of this XML. And um, another thing this API, the XML Connect API offers is um, returning the um, a list of fields. So you can see there is a new building address form uh, method that will return you all the methods that uh, Magento is expecting, all, all the fields that Magento is expecting for the building address. There is a similar one for the shipping address. So we have this um, fake address here, 
and here we would set the building address, we'd check out safe building address, here you can actually tell this is a post, uh, not, uh, uh, not a get request. So this is kind of a little bit like REST-like, uh, although if you look back at the car checkout, this, if, if that's more like a rest, uh, restful, this, should be, uh, this shouldn't be a get, but it is in this case. Um, so we save the building address, we save the shipping address, um, then we request the different shipping methods, and um, here we simply pick the first one and check out save shipping methods. Then we get the payment methods. Um, in order to keep this um, demo simple, I'm uh, using the check money order and also I'm expecting it's there. So if it's not in your shop uh, and you want to try this demo, uh, make sure you enable um, check the check money order first. And this is simple because um, you don't need to uh, interact with the payment provider. Uh, it's just like a basically no configuration payment method and uh, you're good to go. So then uh, we use the check save payment, then the check order review, and you can tell this API, the script is uh, very close to how a regular checkout will work um, step by step. Um, so the checkout order review would return all the products you have in your cart and also an overview of all the totals and you can use this information to do whatever you need to do in your app or in, in your front end and uh, then we finally place the order and um, yeah using the checkout save order method this again is a post request and we get a nice response text and the order id back so let's run the script to see um, how this works so we're fetching product catalog, adding some cards, doing all the things. Here are the fields. This is the um, get um, shipping address or get billing address form. And then we post the addresses. Uh, we set the shipping method and payment method. And finally, here we're placing the order. And this is the message that you would also see in the Magento front end, which here is made available through the API. And here's the new order ID. So let's see if this actually arrived here. Let's look at sales orders, and here we should see the order, yeah, with the 7 at the end. So you can tell the different APIs are basically designed for different purposes, um, while the SOAP API looks like it's more designed for like machine-to-machine uh, -machine communication, if you want to integrate Magento to a different service, to an ERP, or um, anything else that needs access um, to your data, um, that uh, that might be a good fit. Um, uh, same kind of uh, it, uh, looks like is the uh, is happening with the REST API. So you can tell the whole OAuth thing is not really designed to be uh, very user friendly for like a, um, a JavaScript based front end. Um, and uh, but again, there check out Vinay's work on the uh, on, on making that possible without OAuth. And then uh, while the XML Connect API was designed for Magento's internal mobile app, uh, it's a really nice fit to get started and uh, to create your own um, uh, mobile app and interact with Magento in, uh, in no time. So that's super simple. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, let me know if you liked it. Um, I hope uh, it's useful to you and have fun um, talking to Magento. Bye-bye.